Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. It is Friday, the end of the week for some of you. All right, today is October 25th. And again, I can't say enough about how you guys support the channel with the comments and stuff. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, gives me feedback on what direction to go. But I thought today we'd talk about, you know, for the guys and the gals that either have social phobias or really don't want to deal with people in general when it comes to fixing and repairing their stuff. Is there another way to get into this business without them? Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric. If you didn't already know it, and this is the weekday. Today is Friday, the end of the week, October 25th, 2024. So, before we jump into that, I thought I'd talk to you today about certain health conditions and how you need to take care of yourself. I know you, Randy, are healing up from a, was it a knee injury, knee pain. What's going on with me? I've got costochondritis. It's to do with the cartilage around the ribs, and it breaks and it tears, usually from lifting something. I'm not sure. I know when it first started about a month and a half ago, I thought I was actually having a heart attack. Seriously. And I let it go probably two weeks, three weeks of intense pain before I finally got a hold of my primary and set up an appointment and she's the one that diagnosed it with the in the sternum and in the surrounding tissues and stuff of it's very painful to do anything and I can tell you you know I would not wor wish this on my worst enemy I mean you talk about sleep in general you know i love sleeping from usually around 7 30 at night till four in the morning and i'm lucky if i get two maybe three hours a night sleep and that's sleeping in my office chair i can't get comfortable in bed because you lay on the ribs so i prop myself up here in the office chair and sleep here what does that all have to do with the channel that's well i've always wanted to put out good videos you know not shoddy ones not crappy ones i mean crappy and not knowing camera angles and stuff like that i'm okay with but i don't want to give misinformation or bad information or you know not thoroughly explain something that you know that you're watching the video to get from right so i this video is not going to be very long and hopefully it doesn't turn out too bad and we just you know all of us here most of us anyways are rehabilitating from something right you know from hip injuries to having a heart attack like animals i mean we're all getting older right and when we get older we get more fragile and we have to take care of ourselves more so i'm trying to listen to what the doctors are telling me you know Stop doing whatever you're doing. No lifting, no pulling, no tugging. You try to tell that to somebody that works in our profession, right? Even if you didn't, just around the house, simple task now will turn my whole chest into feeling like I'm having a severe heart attack. And just the, the pain and stuff. So, Claude's been trying to pick up the pace. And we've gone to half days for now because I can't work all day anymore at least for now they say it, it could take weeks to months so but on with the video i just thought i'd give you guys an update so if something seems off that's why i i'm not i'm functioning on not a lot of sleep all right but what are we talking about when i say for the people who have social phobias or suck at customer service or maybe they don't suck they just don't want to do it yeah there is act actually 
a very lucrative way you could go about it. And it's being done on a daily basis. And that is, you take, find something on the curb or at an auction or this or that, and you fix it up and then you resell it using Facebook Marketplace is one place, Craigslist not so dominant anymore, or just set it out in the front yard with a for sale sign on it. When you're doing that, you're not buying for somebody else. You're buying with the idea that you're going to make money on the flip, right? And so you have to be cost effective too. You know, you need to have the same tools, the same structure in your shop that someone that's starting a part time business is doing with customers. But you're not really looking at any one customer that's going to buy your unit, right? So you're taking a chance. So isn't the part-timer, but you're taking a bigger chance because the part-timer has already said this is what it's going to cost so much an hour, and either way I'm going to get paid, hopefully. Whereas you could invest and get in over your head on the buying use to flip and sell to make money in pretty deep and so you need to have a lot of common ground that the guys that are doing repairs and that is what is a machine worth on any given day how valuable is that and I understand value is in the eyes of the beholder I've seen guys pay stupid money for old crap and be cheaper than cheap on the newer stuff this could be running in tandem right for you guys that don't want, want to get into the small engine repair business and have customers and stuff, when you first start out, you don't have a lot of customers, right? Because nobody knows that you do it. So what do you do in the intern? Well, my suggestion would be to do just like these flippers are doing. And that is find stuff that, you know, still has value and that you could tinker on and get it running. And sell it for a profit. And I've seen a lot of part-timers. That be half their business. Is that while they're, they get a few customers come in. They get that knocked out. Out the door. And they get paid. And they invest it into some used units. That they have out front for sale. And when they have that certain customer. When you had that customer. That comes in. And the push mower is totally shot. No compression. No nothing. It's it's a whip puppy, right? You've got something to offer them. You know, look, I've got a good used one. And this is where I'm at for a price on it, you know, if you're interested. And I'll take your old one in just for parts. Or not, if you don't have real estate. to, Because the best way to flip, in my eyes, is if you got a yard full of stuff that you can pull parts off from so you're not buying and investing more into that lawnmower or that snowblower that you're trying to pedal. So it's lucrative for both you guys that are starting up part-time and don't want to deal with customers on the other side. Now, what are the pros and cons? Well, the pros to starting up part-time is hopefully you've got a few customers, so you're going to get paid by the hour, right? And hopefully you can get it repaired in a, a decent amount of time and make some money and have a happy customer that's out there telling other people about it, right? But in the interim, you're, you're sitting there twiddling your fingers waiting for somebody to show up. So that would be a con, unless you do like the flippers are doing and that is adjunct your business with used stuff that you've acquired and have out front for sale the cons with a small engine repair business with customers is that you're at the whim of the customer and when i say you're at the whim of the customer i mean that Either your customer is going to be happy or they're going to be pissed, one or the other. There's no gray area usually in, in small engine repair. And that is we solve problems, right? 
And the problem is the customer's machine isn't running right or running at all. So we are the problem solvers. We diagnose it and we get it fixed and get it back to the customer. And like I said, you got to know what stuff is worth. If you got a $200 push mower and you're submitting a bill to the customer for $310, there's something not right there, right? I'm not saying that if the customer has an old, old beast, and that's a great niche to get into, by the way, that they aren't willing to put extra money into it because it has sentimental value. Maybe it was their father's or their grandfather's, grandmother's. But they're looking to get it fixed up, and they know that it's it's probably going to be more than what the machine's worth. But they're willing to do it, whereas your average person, they're just looking to have you solve a problem. I need something to mow my yard. And if you come back with a price over the top of what it would cost to have them go buy a brand new one, then understandably you're going to have problems. So you and the flipper really need to know what you stuff is going for in your area. It's location, location, location. You know, up here, a decent push mower, if we take it in and, and get it running, is 50 to 60 bucks. If it's a walk behind self propelled, about a hundred, hundred and twenty. But you need to know that stuff. And you need to be able to tell the customer when they bring it in, you know, Jason taught me this, is if it has no compression and it's an older machine, good chances are that's where it's gonna be, right? You can do a diagnostic and then charge a diagnostic fee on it. And if the valves need to be adjusted, that might get you, you know, where the customer's happy because they've kept their machine and you fixed it for them. But if it's something other than valves, usually it's not worth fixing. And I'll tell you right now, customers appreciate honesty. And when I tell them, look, it's going to cost you more than what the thing is worth. And I'd rather see you take that money and put it towards a new one that comes with a warranty than put it into this thing that may not last you a week. Might last you two years, but, you know, it's a... So the, the cons of trying to run a repair business is trying to get customers in, right? And then understanding their problem and getting it fixed. Whereas a flipper, they're looking at... What do I have to do to that machine to get it to where it's sellable? And does it still retain enough value to make a profit on it? And you have to figure in your time. A lot of guys don't, you know, when it comes to flipping. They may spend 10 hours on a push mower and then charge 50 or 60 bucks for it because they don't figure in their time. They just figure, you know, what they pay for it and whatever parts they put on it. It's a good way to learn how to do stuff, you know, from the ground up. But to feasibly do it as a part-time income, it's not going to work. So the other con is you have to deal with customers and their wants and their needs. Whereas a flipper is, they have a customer and... Most of these guys that I know have got a threshold warranty on them. The minute it goes out of the shop, you own it. No guarantees. And you can't for 50, 60 bucks, right? You know, it, it is what it is. They can either take it or leave it. So in the comments, let me know what you guys think. I know it's not going to be that long a video, and I apologize, you know, for it. But I know some of you guys are doing both. You're flipping and, and working on stuff part-time. What are the pros and cons that you see of either staying as a flipper or doing both or just doing the repair work? I'm curious to hear because I think depending on where you're located, it's going to be a different response. So on that note, you guys have a great Friday and hopefully a super weekend. And we'll catch you here bright and early Monday morning for the weekday. On that note, enjoy.